Okay, now we get to functions. Now, um, to actually get your marks for the functions, the basic functions that you need are the following. You need one meaningful and relevant and meaningful sum, max, min, count, average, or today. Not all of them, one of them, all right? So somewhere where something like max, min, count, average, or today makes sense. Somewhere where median mode, small, large, or round makes sense, or a combination of, of two of the simple ones, like max, minus, min, or something like that. Then a single one of these, count if, count a, count blank, or sum if. And then lastly, a more complex function, such as a test with a true or false, which is an if, or a function that is not in the grade 11 curriculum. So I'm just going to show you an example or two that I would suggest. So age is excellent um, to use for average, mode, uh, min or max, and especially your hours per day as well. Um, that's good for, if you have something like a scale question, that's very nice to use a mode for. I mean, an age wouldn't work like nice for a mode because mode is about repeating numbers. And age, I think there will be too wide of a range. Um, so that's not very meaningful. Count if on gender, even though it will work, it's not very meaningful. Rather do a count if on how many people said yes or no. Okay. Um, now I just want to show you in terms of formatting how I would format this. Because it's also about what it looks like. In Just so that the, the data makes sense. So to, to have these little questions, I mean... Basically, what I what I like to do is to put a label next to what I'm doing. So I'll say average age, and then next to that, I'll actually do the average. Okay. And let's say, uh, same with month or may maybe monthly spend, you can sum. I don't know if that's necessary, but I mean, we've already got our first mark, so it's not really necessary to do more than that. Now, um, because the first mark is one of these. You don't have to do all of them. I mean, it's nice to do more than one, but it's not really necessary. Um, for the next one, we need to do a mode. So a mo mode would work nicely on something like hours or a scale question. Okay, but the one I wanted to show you is for um, a yes or no question. For example, playing games. So what I'd like to do is I'd actually say yes or no as the two options and actually say the question play games at the top and then I'll do the count if under each one of those now the reason I think this is important is because even though you only get marks for one count if you are actually going to have to do something like a count if more often because you need um, more data like this to be able to make graphs okay now, the one thing you will definitely want to know is how to do a count if so that it actually counts a value when there is something else in the cell. So if we do a count if, a normal count if for Instagram over here, um, I'll show you what the answer is. And it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you see it actually didn't count Instagram in the top instance. So the thing that you need to do is instead of writing Instagram as your criteria, you actually need to put in a star on either side like that. Okay, so inside the um, apostrophes or the parentheses, whatever, um, the stars actually go on either side of that. Those are called wildcards. And then what that'll do is it'll actually pick up the one where it's inside another cell as well. See, there I have the right answer. And you'll have to format this nicely because you are going to have to make a second sheet called analysis. And we're going to have to cut and paste all our analysis onto the sheet. Okay, so first format it. Um, you don't have to form it as table, but maybe use cell styles and borders. So um, maybe like a 
light green or something like that, like a darker green for the for the labels and a lighter green for the answer or something like that. Something that's still close enough to the original color scheme. Okay. Okay, now let's say I've done a lot of these. Now I'm going to cut and paste them onto my analysis page. I can't move, I can't copy them. If I copy them, the references, the cell references, I will try to adapt. Um, and I don't want that. Um, so I'm going to right click cut and go and paste them here. And then you'll see the functions actually still work. Now I'm not going to go show you what I did because I don't want you to see the answers. But um, you actually need to go and click on your cells to check that you didn't paste it as plain numbers. You have to check that it actually still contains cell references and it still contains the functions because that's what you're going to get your marks for. All right. Now you need to resize and do some formatting so that people can read everything you've written. And sometimes it's nice to actually put it all on the same space as well. If you'd like, um, you could also always switch off the grid lines, viewing of the grid lines, then it looks even prettier if you want on the page layout tab. Um, the cells all still work, but then you don't even see the little lines. So that's quite nice. All right. Now, um, I want to make a suggestion for you for the last function. So for number four, um, you can use the if. And if you want to do an if, um, something I can suggest to do an if on is to actually put in an extra column here, and which you would not copy to analysis, um, and actually test, let's say, the value of the monthly spend or the value of a scale, and test whether it's high or low, and actually assign someone a value based on that. So I can maybe say, um, if someone spends over a hundred rand, then they are a high spender. Or if someone spends over three hundred rand, then they're a high spender. Otherwise, they're a low spender. Something like that. Or if um, someone uh, said uh, on the scale question higher than three, then they like the internet. Otherwise, they don't like the internet. Then I basically classify them based on the answer of another question. So you can do that. Another thing that's very nice though, is to, I'm going to show you another function. One of my favorite functions that's not in our curriculum, um, which you'll get the mark for as a level four, this level four question, because questions, functions that are not in the grade 11 curriculum can earn you this mark. And this function is called average if. Now, the purpose of average if, it works similar to sum if, it works exactly the same in fact. The purpose is instead of summing if, it does an average if. So let's say I want to figure out who spends the most money, males or females. It doesn't actually help, I just do a sum if, because I think I have more females here than what I do males. So my answers won't be accurate, it will be skewed based on the number of females that answered my question, my questionnaire. So instead, I can actually do an average if. An average if works like this. My average range, I always like doing it from the bottom, is the column that contains the numbers. My criteria is what um, I'm actually testing. So I'm going to say female. And the range is where it's going to look up the gender. Okay, so this will be female spend and male spend. Or well, let's just say female and male, female, male, um, monthly spend. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same for male. Ugh, look at me. <laughs> Average if. Or well, let's quickly see how we could do this in a more effective manner. So if I wanted to actually do this in a way that I could copy it down, I could actually click on female here because it is outside my data range. I'm not allowed to click on it in here because there it's inside my data range. And I could lock with my F4 button, make, make use of absolute cell referencing, um, 
to make an absolute cell reference of both my ranges. Now, because my um, agenda that I used over here, cell F17, is not is is relative, I can actually copy this down, and it will actually have adapted. So the two ranges stayed absolute, and the gender moved down. Okay, so that's a very nice function to use, and that'll earn you the marks for a level four, and that actually gives you amazing data to use for a graph. So just remember to do your formatting again and move that to your analysis page. All your functions, unless you're doing a function on every record, such as an if, all your functions need to be formatted similarly and they need to be moved to the analysis page. Please just check once you've moved them. Let me show you what happens. If I copy this and I go and paste it here, it actually does a div because it's trying to it's changed the cell references to this page, which is not going to work. So be careful that if you paste it, that this didn't happen. Because if you just look at this, this looks fine. But if you look at the answer, it actually isn't a function anymore. So I'm not going to get any marks for that. So be very careful of that and rather just cut it. Cut and paste it over here. And then if you click here, you'll check it actually still has the function in there along with the reference to the page on which those cells are. Just leave that right there. Okay. And format it the same as the rest now.